There are over 99 different ways a goblin speaks, but only one noise as generic as this one. Hey gang, just to let you know, you can now use the promo code MTGMUDSTA, all caps, at flipsidegaming.com and originalmagicart.store. Using the code gets you 10% off orders $10 or more, and you get to help out the channel at the same time. I also want to let you guys know that Flipside Gaming is doing another giveaway, this time for a box of Ultimate Masters. Anyone who uses my promo code MTGMUDSTA for orders over $10 or more will be entered to win. There's one entry per person, so I wish you good luck, and please be sure to let me know what box topper you get when you win. Today's game finds us back at Platinum Star Games in Howell, New Jersey. I am playing Tristani, keeping a Canopy Vista, Bountiful Promenade, Scavenger Grounds, Zendikar Resurgent, Scattered Groves, Farhaven Elf, and Nature's Lore. John has rejoined me, playing Vile Smasher and Ikra, keeping Savage Lands, Verdant Catacomb, Phyrexian Arena, Acidic Slime, Dreamstone Hedron, Mountain, and Pernicious Deeds. Ryan, who's a longtime viewer, has kindly come out and joined us, playing his Lord Wingrace deck. He keeps a Swamp, a Mountain, Burgeoning, Badlands, Red Elemental Blast, and Sphere of Resistance. Lastly, John's friend Steve is new to the channel, and he's playing Voril, keeping three Forests, Soul Ring, Traverse the Outlands, Cold-Eyed Selkie, and Krufix God of Horizons. Ryan wins the die roll and starts us off. Ryan plays a Badlands and passes. Steve plays a Forest and he casts Soul Ring. John plays a Savage Lands, which comes in tapped and he passes. I play a tap Scattered Groves, passing to Ryan. Ryan plays a Swamp and casts Sphere of Resistance. Steve plays a Botanical Sanctum and he doesn't let some Sphere slow him down when he casts Voril on turn two. John plays a Verdant Catacomb and passes. He cracks it as we move to my turn, and John goes to find a bayou after taking one. I play a tapped Canopy Vista, and I pass. Ryan plays a mountain, and he has to pay two for Soul Ring, passing to Steve. Steve plays a forest and casts Kadama's Reach, seemingly unaffected by the sphere. Steve then moves to combat, and hits Ryan for one with his commander. John plays a mountain, and he passes to me. I play a Bountiful Promenade, and I pay three to cast Nature's Lore. I go and find a tapped Temple Garden, and I pass to Ryan. Ryan plays a Mana Confluence, and taps out to cast Stranglehold, taking one from the Confluence. Steve plays a Forest, and ruins his matching basics. He then taps a lot of mana for Crufix, and passes to John. John plays another Mountain, and he casts Pernicious Deed. He then passes to me. I play a Scavenger Grounds as my land for turn, and don't want to put anything out with Deeds waiting on John's side of the field, so I pass. Ryan casts a crop rotation and accidentally sacrifices two lands, which we quickly correct. He also takes one from tapping the confluence for mana, and he goes to find a verdant catacomb, putting it to the field and passing to Steve. Steve plays an exotic orchard as his land for turn, and he casts a Gyre Sage in his main phase. He then casts a cold eyed Selkie, and Ryan responds to it by cracking his fetch land to go and find a land. Steve then moves to combat and hits Ryan for one with Voril once more. John draws and plays a Cinder Glade as his land for turn, which comes in untapped because he has two basics. He passes without cracking the deed, much to my dismay. I draw and play a Force as my land for turn, and I pass to Ryan. At the end of my turn, John cracks the deed for four and pretty much wipes the board except for Steve's Crufix. Ryan plays a Birds of Paradise in his main phase, and then an Orcish Lumberjack. With nothing else, he passes to Steve. Steve plays another Forest for his land for turn, and he recasts his commander, Voril. John plays a forest and taps out to cast a Dreamstone Hedron. With nothing else, he passes to me. I cast a Farhaven Elf in my main phase, going to my library to find a plains and putting it to the field before passing turn. Ryan is a bit land starved now, and he pays five to cast Lord Wingrace, tapping his birds to help pay the cost. Ryan then upticks his planeswalker, discarding burgeoning and drawing one. We then see a Dryad Arbor hit the field, and Ryan passes to Steve. Steve plays another Forest as a land for turn, and taps out in his main phase to cast a Genesis Hydra, where X is 6. He does a Pseudo Cascade before the Hydra hits the field, revealing the top 6 cards. He keeps the Deep Glow Skate, which sadly doesn't double the Hydra's counters, as it's still in the stack when the Skate hits the field. The Skate then enters, and so does the Hydra, and Steve passes to John. John plays a Mountain in his land for turn, and he brings out Bile Smasher. He then casts Vampiric Link onto Bile Smasher, and he passes. 
I draw for turn and bring out Uvenwald Hydra, aka the MVP of the deck. I grab a mirror pool and put it onto the field tapped, passing to Ryan. Ryan down ticks Lord Wingrace and brings back his Verdant Catacomb and a Swamp. He then pays 2 and drops a Dark Confidant and passes to Steve. Steve activates Voril in his main phase and doubles the counter on his Hydra. He isn't done though, and he casts Traverse the Outlands, which when it resolves, allow him to go and find 12 basics. Steve then moves to combat, and friend becomes foe as Steve swings the Hydra at John for 12. At the end of Steve's turn, John cracks the Hedron and draws 3 cards. John plays a Badlands as land for turn, and he casts Hellkite Overlord. Before it resolves, John rolls for the Vile Smasher trigger and hits Steve for 8 while John also gains 8 from the Vampiric Link on the Vile Smasher. Ryan also sacrifices his Verdant Catacombs to go and find a land. Moving to combat, John then swings the Hellkite at Lord Wingrace, who takes the hit and dies. With nothing else, he passes to me. I draw and I cast Rishkar's Expertise in my main phase, drawing 8 cards as it resolves. I then get to drop Greater Good for free, and I play a Reliquary Tower as my land for turn. Before passing to Ryan, I cast Elemental Bond and I end my turn. Ryan reveals a Phyrexian Tower, which I'm super happy is being reprinted in Ultimate Masters, for his Dark Confidant trigger, and he takes zero. He then draws for turn, and asks if there's an Urborg out, and plays a Cabal Coffers even when there isn't one. He then taps out, tapping the Lumberjack and sacrificing his Bayou to cast an Exsanguinate where X is 11. This has him drain all of his opponents for 11 life, and he gains 33. Steve untaps his massive land base, and casts a Hooded Hydra where X is 18. He then moves to combat, and swings a Genesis Hydra at me, who gets chumped by a Farhaven Elf. With nothing else, Steve passes. John draws and casts Ikra in his main phase. He rolls to see who Vile Smasher will hit, and I take 5 while John gains 5. John then moves to combat, and the Hellkite Overlord swings at Steve for 8, which, when it connects, triggers Ikra, and John gains 8 as well. I play a Force as my land for turn, and I drop Zendikar Resurgent. With my lands now tapping for 2, I cast Day of Judgment, and responding to my own spell, I sacrifice the Hydra to the greater good, drawing 10 and then discarding 3. Sadly I forget that John can regenerate his dragon, which he does. I then pass to Ryan. Ryan draws and activates his coffers for 3 black mana. He then taps the rest of his mana, plus his newly played Phyrexian Tower, to recast Lord Wingrace. He then discards Beseju and draws 2, passing to Steve. Steve now has a massive army of snakes on his board, which I'd forgotten that the Hooded Hydra makes on death. He then drops a Bane of Progress, which pretty much only hits my stuff, and it gets 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters after wiping the board of artifacts and enchantments. Steve then drops a Spike Weaver, and I'm not thrilled with this side of the board. Finishing off his turn, Steve recasts Voril for what feels like the hundredth time, and moves to combat. He swings all 18 snakes at John, and they all connect, and he passes turn. John plays a Smoldering Marsh as land for turn, and he casts Thought Vessel. He then recasts Ikra in his main phase, before moving to combat. He swings his dragon at Steve, but Steve pays 1 to remove a counter from the Spike Weaver, and fogs a combat step. I pay 7 in my main phase, and I cast a Maria Shepherd. I then drop a Plains to my land for turn, and I bring back Zendikar Resurgent. I then tap only 3 lands to cast Karmic Guide, drawing as I cast it. The Karmic Guide then enters, and I bring back Uvenwald Hydra, and I go and find a Rogue's Passage. I then pass to Ryan. Ryan upticks Lord Wingrace, discarding Mox Diamond and drawing one. He then casts a Trinisphere, and follows up with a Tireless Tracker before passing to Steve. Steve plays an Island for his turn, and he activates Voril to double the counters on his Weaver. Moving to combat, Steve swings the Snakes at Lord Wingrace, and the Bane of Progress at Ryan for five. Ryan doesn't block, and Lord Wingrace takes another one for the team, while Ryan takes 5. In Steve's second main phase, he taps out to cast a Primordial Hydra where X is 19. He passes, and instantly regrets his choices. John plays a Wooded Foothills as a land for turn, and cracks it taking 1 to go and find Taiga. Moving to combat, he swings his dragon at Steve, who can now no longer fog because of his lack of mana, and John pumps the dragon with the fire breathing ability on it to take Steve out. John then casts Acidic Slime in his second main phase, and has the Enter the Battlefield trigger blow up my Reliquary Tower. I play a Force as my land for turn, and I cast a Core Tribe Elder, Pain 3. I draw from the Resurgent trigger, and then sacrifice it to go and find a Plains. With the Plains hitting the field, I get to bring it back with my Ameria Shepherd, and I sacrifice it once more to go and find another basic. 
I repeat this process until my library is out of planes, which doesn't take long as I've only got one more planes in it. I then use the final sacrifice of Steve, not the player, but the creature, to find a forest. With the forest hitting the field, I get to return a permanent to my hand, and Greater Good finds its way back. I also realize now that the Karmic Guide should be dead, and I put it to the bin before casting See the Unwritten. I whiff for what feels like the first time with See the Unwritten, and I only get to keep a Restoration Angel. This flickers the Hydra as it enters, and I go and grab Blighted Woodlands. I then tap 10 mana worth of lands to cast and equip the Helm of the Host onto my Hydra. I then move to combat, and get a token copy of the Hydra, finding another land. I swing both the token copy and the original Hydra at Ryan for 34 total, as they're both 17-17s. Ryan blocks one of them though, and takes only 17. In my second main phase, I cast Wood Elves, drawing from the Resurgent trigger, and then going to go find a Forest card. I grab a basic, and this returns Karmic Guide to my hand thanks to the Shepherd. Ryan draws for turn, and casts by Force where X is 2, and destroys my Helm and John's Thought Vessel. Ryan then casts a Mana Crypt, but has to pay 3 for it, and pass to John. John draws, and moves to combat. He swings the Hellkite and Ikra at Ryan for 11, and gains 15 life as they connect. In his second main phase, John then brings out Vile Smasher once more, and passes to me. I play a Planes from my hand, and return Helm of the Host with the Amiria Shepherd trigger. I then equip it onto the Hydra, and I cast an Angel of Sanctions, drawing as I cast it, and as it enters, exiling Vile Smasher. I then move to combat, gaining another Hydra token from the Helm trigger, and grabbing a land. This lets me return Panharmonicon to my hand with the Ameria trigger. I then declare my attackers, swinging two Hydras at Ryan, and the original at John, alongside the Restoration Angel and the Ameria Shepherd. Sadly I forget about the Acidic Slime, and John blocks my Hydra with it. Ryan dies in combat, while John takes 7 and my original Hydra dies to the Acidic Slime. In my second main phase, I cast Karmic Guide, bringing back the Hydra, and finding another land. This land in turn lets me return my Avengers Zendikar, and I pass to John. John plays a Woodland Cemetery as his land for turn, and I realize I need to discard down to 7, so I pitch some cards. Moving to combat, John casts a Cauldron Dance, bringing out a Worm Coil Engine from his hand, and returning the Acidic Slime from his graveyard. He blows up my helm once more with his Slime Trigger, and he swings everything at me. Before moving to blockers, I cast Swords to Plowshares on his Worm Coil Engine, which gives him 6 life, and I then block the Hellkite with my real copy of the Hydra, and the Angel of Sanctions goes on Ikra. I then take 2 damage from the Slime, and John regenerates his Hellkite. John then returns the Slime to his hand at the end of his combat step, and in his second main phase, he casts a Savage Hydra where X is 1. I untap for turn, and I cast Panharmonicon in my main phase. We then see a God Pharaoh's Gift hit the field, and I then cast Rootborn Defenses to make my creatures indestructible, but more importantly, make another Hydra. This Hydra gets to go and find me two more lands, which in turn pumps the other Hydras as well. I also get to return two permanents to my hand, and Helm of the Host and Sun Titan find their way back. I then recast the Helm, and equip it onto a Hydra. Moving to combat, I make another hasty Hydra token, and gain two more lands, return two more cards, and just swing an absurdly large amount of huge Hydras at John for the win. Game review time. So, I feel a bit bad for Steve this game. He saw his mistake before anyone else did, and he only pointed it out after John had attacked. If we'd realized earlier, we probably would have all agreed to let him untap one land in exchange for one plus plus encounter on the Hydra, but as it stood, he felt that he should play it through as it was. I admire his commitment and not wanting to do a takesies backsies, and it was cool to see him pumping up his Hydras to become huge beaters. It was also super cool to meet Ryan, and he was playing Lord Wingraze, and I'm always happy to see more Jun decks hitting the field. As I've said in the past, if you live in Montreal or around New Jersey and you want to get in a game, message me on Facebook or Twitter and we can try and figure something out. Tristani proved once again to be very resistant and very recurring as I was able to get back my Helm of the Host several times. Considering all the mana that I had, I didn't even need to bring out Tristani at any point to keep myself from dying. It was fantastic, and Uvenwald Hydra and Ameria Shepherd have proven once again why they're the two MVPs in my deck. John's Ikra and Vile Smasher deck is always a treat to see, just like Trevor's is, and it's cool to see some variants between the two decks. I like John's addition of Empiric Link, as it gives him a reliable way of gaining life beyond Ikra. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash mtgmudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at twitch.tv slash mtgmudsta. 
This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.